22, one day into my ban from Sunken Diamond. Stanford loses to a team my high school team could have beaten. And not just loses, oh, by a little bit, like just gets drubbed by UConn. UConn. I could have played for UConn when I was in the 12th, I almost said 12th grade, and that would be actually accurate. When I was 12, I am worried. I'm not talking smack like, ha ha, you guys lost because I'm not sitting section six. I am deathly afraid that when you don't let the goat into Sunken Diamond, the same way that the Cubs or the Red Sox, somebody didn't let a goat in, and then that franchise didn't get any wins in the, the national championship of baseball, the Super Bowl of, of hardball for 100 years. I think you guys call it the World Series. After losing Stanford versus Connecticut, where everyone's like, uh, uh, where's our warm blanket for when we strike out on three pitches, Larry either says something positive or maybe it was positive. I mean, maybe you moved a runner over by, by giving up a couple strikes. Maybe you played team baseball. So that warm blanket, when when I'm your warm blanket and it gets pulled away, that's what happens. So am I happy or sad that Stanford loses because it didn't have Larry Chang, a force of effing nature? Well, it is a force of nature, Larry Chang, but it's actually mm, 35% the force of nature known as Dr. Andy Ewan, Connecticut. So, so am I happy that Stanford loses without Larry Chang? No, I'm scared out of my gourd. 99.99% of humans would be like, ha ha, that's what you get for banning me. And if I would have had that attitude, Stanford would not have won two games back to back against UConn. And then I happily cheered Stanford and look what I picked out of the trash. And speaking about picking stuff out of the trash, stop eating Chick-fil-A, okay? No more carb wrapped in carb, okay? No more Chick-fil-A. I picked this piece of trash up uh, off the ground, not off the ground, but the trash overflow at Sunken. Because guess what's on the other half of it? Apology. I literally, oh, I want to be able to hide uh, UC Santa Barbara head coach's uh, email address. Oh, wait. His email address is available on the website, is it not? At UC Santa Barbara. Because guess what happened after the UC Santa Barbara game? Guess what happened after the UC Santa Barbara game? Coach says to me with a straight face, hey, I wanted to meet you. And he says, again, uh, UC Santa Barbara versus Stanford Regional. I am actively cheering against him for four and a half hours. And Stanford won, I want to say, like, it was a close game. It was like 8-4. After his team gets eliminated... He's willing to be in a selfie with me and offers me a job. Did I just say, yeah, uh, trash talk, uh, your team lost, trash talk? I did not. I said, oh my God, you're going to offer me a job? <sighs> well, coach, if you do offer me a job, it'll be as, and this is verbiage verbatim. If you do offer me a job, it'll be for being an assistant to the assistant to the assistant, holding a clipboard, 
holding a clipboard. Holding a clipboard. Think about the EQ required for when your D1 team that you're captaining, okay, is losing to Stanford and there's this large Asian dude in a cowboy hat that is, he's not even Stanford. He went to the University of Illinois and he's a little energetic. What's my level of energy compared to Dr. Andy Ewan? What is it? Similar vibe, vibe like uh, low socioeconomic slang for vibration. I am a puddle. I am more unhappy after Stanford loses at, at Sunken Diamond to UConn 2022 than I am, or is it 2021? It doesn't matter. It's the UConn Stanford Super Regional where Stanford's hosting the lowest seed left in the tournament for College World Series. Why did I say the Super Bowl of baseball before as a joke? Because when this guy, my God, my visual cues are like perfect. Because when this guy pitched me on a College World Series, like, oh, hey, if you come here, you'll help us win a College World Series. I'm like, Coach, I don't even know your name. You call all the time. I don't even know your name. I mean, just coach. What is a college World Series? I thought it was the cheesiest thing I had ever heard, which is a World Series. Everyone knows what the World Series is, and you're going to call it a college World Series? Because in basketball, the sport that I was dominant at... It's a, you know, NCAA men's championship. Sweet 16. Branded, branded, branded. And baseball has a tournament too? I didn't know about it. And then when coach was selling it to me, I literally laughed in his face over the phone. When he called Naperville and he's like, yeah, if you come here, you will help us win a national championship. Guess what, coach? You're right, it was a big mistake that I picked my school, but you know what also is good for you? If I, if I and my cancerous attitude would have come to Stanford, you guys would be down 50% of your championships because my attitude was cancerous. It was all about me wanting to play short. I can play short like when I'm yeah. Uh, what was I thinking? <sighs> so I picked University of Illinois. I bring these things up to stay on focus because when Stanford lost to UConn, when Stanford lost to UConn, I was in a puddle. I was like, no, 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 no. Those undergrads are not going to get hurt just because two departments are fighting. Well, technically it was one department versus an institution. Department of Athletics headed up by Bernard Muir and Institution of Larry Chang. You know, in Silicon Valley, there's three institutions. Stanford University, Y Combinator, Larry Chang. And so I was like, no, 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 no. Because normally it's when two departments fight, undergrads get screwed sound familiar and so that's what happened to me when I was an undergrad because engineering department was fighting with athletic department because they're like he's being stretched too thin he's a top 50 physicist he needs to just focus on engineering and then baseball and the sport I played was like, hey, 
why don't you just study basket weaving at Illinois, graduate in five years, red shirt, and just focus on sports? Or at Stanford, I'd have graduated that shiitake in like two years, just like Steve Jervis said. Oh, I thought going to a shittier school would be safer. And to my defense, Stanford was ranked lower than University of Illinois. And I just pattern recognized incorrectly, which is right back on cue because now I no longer do pattern recognition. I delegate that pattern recognition to a mentor. Pattern recognition, pattern repetition, pattern iteration. Why am I so dominant with this guy's friend, Augie Garrido, on my brain? Because at Stanford Baseball, all I do is say genius shiitake that Augie Garrido says, okay? All of Augie Garrido, would, would he says, well, he would actually eat this kind of food. But anytime Augie Garrido, Augie Garrido, you guys haven't met him. Maybe you have met him. Maybe he was your baseball coach. Maybe you went to camp. He was my D1 baseball coach. And he said, I feel like I can alter three to five pitches per game based on not cheers, but statements I make. Let me repeat that. Augie Garrido thought using Psycho Cybernetics, a book that he required us to read, unpopular, three to five books, three to five books, three to five outcomes he felt he could sway. And me with Augie as my mentor, via the spirit of Augie, was able to sway sometimes 40 pitches, encourage the outcome. Pitch predictability, that was just a fluke thing that I did one game where I literally called every pitch, pitch type and location. Uh, Mississippi State hosting Stanford University. Uh, it was actually my first Super Regional. So with Stanford Baseball, I'm actually new to Stanford Baseball because I'm a 20-some year basketball season ticket holder. You know, basketball. Not emotional about it. It's just basketball. You win, you lose. You want them to win. Baseball makes me a little bit crazy. So I'm relatively newish into Stanford Baseball. What is it like? Five, five and a half years, six years. Not that long. And guess who got me into Stanford baseball? Because I was such a good Stanford basketball fan. Bernard Muir <laughs> asks me, and he's kind of sorry he did. Hey, uh, are you a fan of baseball? Because we can just go to the baseball game right after the basketball game. We could just walk over. I know, we're friends. We're still friends. Tried to ban me. We're still friends. I mean, he needs to leave as athletic director. And I need to get him fired into a better job. But still friends. He's the guy who invited me to Stanford Baseball. And I casually have gone to maybe in 20 years, uh, three games, four games, two games in the 20 years. You know, for the Augie Garrido games, you know, catch a few innings. I wasn't saying, actually, I was saying Augie Garrido stuff, uh, but I really wasn't cheering Stanford because, because, you know, when UT's at Stanford, uh, I'm kind of cheering for the dude that I know. Kind of like, kind of like Cubs fan. If Nico Horner's playing. So I went to a couple games. Now I go to like two or three games when Stanford's at UCLA. I go to two or three games when Stanford's at Utah. I go to two or three games when Stanford's at University of Washington. Uh, one year I went to all the, after I got uh, invited out after UConn, 
The following year, I went to every away game. So Bernard Veer invites me, and, and then I sat down, and this is Coach's last season, uh, during final season, hashtag final season. And I was like, okay, you know, baseball is pretty cool, and, you know, I'm in every pitch, right, because I wasn't when I was a, in college myself. I was just kind of all about myself, but actually not playing is cathartic because then I'm not stressed about having to go in or angry that I'm not starting both at short and at pitcher. Cause when I'm pitching, I'm like, if only I had me at short. And if I'm at short, I'm all, if I were pitching, there wouldn't be any balls at short. And so, I was in every pitch, and they're going to just, uh, you know, he's going to retire. So I'm not buying a season ticket, and I could just pick up baseball tickets for, you know, five bucks at the door and then sit behind home plate because it's cheap AF because few people go. Oh, he retires, and I got a bobblehead. In fact, I got a bunch of bobbleheads because I hosted uh, entrepreneurs. Oh, have you heard me do that before? Actually, one of the entrepreneurs that I hosted is the guy who got me in a Bitcoin in 2000. Well, after October 2008, when the white paper got released, because I was a little behind and I didn't really buy in until like 9, 10, 11. So I totally waited. 10, 11, 12, I mean. And so that was one of the, okay. So he retires and uh, I'm maybe hosted by Satoshi Nakamoto himself at a baseball game, or I hosted him at a baseball game. So coach retires, right? So, so there's a press conference introducing the new coach. Whether I was there or whether I was near or whether I overheard it, I'm a little foggy because I'm going to Stanford stuff all the time. And I was there for like so many basketball coach introductions when it was good or bad because sometimes Bernard fired my friend, the head basketball coach. And so in solidarity with the new, with the old basketball coach, sometimes I would be hezzy and I, I just was trying to not be that booster who'd be like, no, 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 this is the head coach you should have. I'm like, I'm a casual, not a casual fan. I mean, I'm a, I'm a fan with an IQ of almost 500, but, but I don't spend hours and hours on your sport you know your sport and you're athletic director, so I'm not gonna second guess or demand, you know, changes. I'm just here to meet people. Okay, confession. I'm just here to meet undergrads who are student athletes. So that way I can tell them my sob story and then for them to not F up their student athletic journey if they're not getting enough playing time. Speaking about not getting enough playing time, uh, right on cue, uh, Alberto Rios signing my hat at the Pac-12 tournament where he played zero innings. And look at how he signed it. He signed it as if other people were going to sign it. Look at that. He signed it like another person was going to sign it. I mean, how, how humble is that? This is how I sign stuff. Like the way I sign stuff is I just assume no one else is gonna be signing stuff. Don't be copying my signature, creepers. Not getting a lot of playing time. Me cheering on every student athlete's journey, which is why when the scores like 14 to 2 I'm mentally into it because 
now my other undergrad friends get to finally play. Because writing Pine, I remember what that felt like. Yeah, I had a toxic attitude, but I do remember the pain. And I'm not saying that their pain was my pain, but I am saying that, yeah, I know, my hair is just always like this. Just wake up like this. My pain, it's, just, it's commiseration, but it's also getting better. It's also getting better. It's also getting better while you're, and what happened next year? What happened next year? Alberto Rios ends up batting the five hole and just catching fire all year. And I was, I, I saw it. I literally saw him get 40% better. I literally saw him getting 40% better. Like, I saw him getting 40% better, 30% better, 10% better, right before my eyes. So when Stanford lost against University of Connecticut, I was in a puddle. I was like, don't have this interdepartment fight between Stanford and, not Stanford Engineering, Stanford Business, but Stanford Athletics and an institution of Silicon Valley because my mentee said, who's now my mentor said, the wars at schools, the, war, the wars were so intense because the stakes were so low. Two departments fighting. Have you ever thought that Stanford engineering uh, fought with Stanford business, right? Why can't you collaborate? Oh, how about when uh, two entities fight South by Southwest and UT? Oh, solve that. So UT hated South by, South by hated UT. Solution, the third institution of Silicon Valley, solo co-founder of UT eWeek. So I'm in a puddle after UConn just boat races Stanford for like two touchdowns. And basically it looks like the series is over. Because when you lose by two touchdowns, not good. Game was never close. Of course, I watched all of it. I watched all of it. From one of my houses, I don't remember. I don't remember if I left Palo Alto. I don't remember. I remember watching it on TV and literally crying because I couldn't do anything about it. If I'm at the game, I could do something about it. And you know what? I really don't feel that bad. But you could see how I felt bad because, because Stanford Athletics made a mistake in who is paying the price, undergrads. I just supported Stanford with support saying, hey, listen, we, we, you, you went to Omaha last year. We are going to Omaha this year. I get my pronouns mixed up sometimes. By the way, F you for never asking me what my pronouns are. They're listed right there in my Twitter bio, X bio. We are going to Omaha after you guys win a couple of innings. Game two, Stanford University hosting University of Connecticut. Just trying to win a couple innings and and maybe try to win a couple at bats. Oh, does this sound like trying to win inning by inning? It does. I'm giving myself goosebumps because that's what Augie Garrido would say. So I said the same shiitake where I'm like, hey, you know, kind of be happy that you lost this first game. Because if you win two games right away, you're going to be sitting in my hotel room in Omaha not my hotel room. You're going to be sitting in my hotel, uh, Hilton Garden Inn. You're going to be sitting in my hotel, uh, Radisson. You're going to be sitting in my hotel, Embassy Suites. You're going to be sitting in my hotel, Marriott. Team Hotel, Team Hotel, Team Hotel. Overton, 
in Lubbock. You're going to be sitting in my hotel, the team hotel. Yeah, I front ran your team hotel by owning your team hotel, getting to your team hotel before your team hotel. And if the NFL can't keep me from staying in both team hotels, because that's uh, law, I don't know if anybody can stop me. Oh, is this how I became the third institution of Silicon Valley? So I, yes, front run. Yes, PQRST. Yes, Team Hotel. That's a protocol that my mentor gave me, Mark McCormack. HTG, HFA, OTR. How to get home field advantage on the road. This video just started for you. You don't care about baseball. This is an Easter egg. This is an Easter egg at the 25 minute mark. I'm actually taking notes while I'm talking. Think about that. You're not even taking notes while, okay, doesn't matter. I'm not gonna talk Chinese shit. Chinese trash talk is not like black or white people trash talk. It's Chinese people trash talk. And guess who's Tom Brady's Chinese trash talking mentor? And I gave him the permission to culturally appropriate the way that chinky people talk trash. I literally taught him and mentored him on how to talk trash. And he, his trash talk is next, next level. Uh, oh, is there a hashtag for it, Larry? Oh, good question coming in through the uh, Between My Ears chat, which is, yeah, there is. CS183, another mentee, turned into a mentor. CS183, no space trash talk. C like computer, S like science. They're number 183. It's, it's one more than 182. It's one less than 184. CS183 trash talk <clears throat> what it is in one sentence it's reverse trash talk the statement of okay i will see you in omaha but you've got to win a couple of innings what am i saying i'm saying you could ban me I'm still your fan, okay? In fact, freaking focus. Like, no gossiping about Larry Chang. No gossiping about when one department is at odds with an institution of Silicon Valley. No, 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 no. No gossip. We could gossip about people. Mm, bad. We could gossip about ideas. Mm, okay. Okay, I mean, it's pretty good. Probably better if we gossip about our execution. That's an expansion on a prior. And so I went through inning by inning the positives because you lose by two touchdowns. There are some positives, right? Uh, you still have both your arms and both your legs. Dr. Andy Yoon didn't. Right? There's some positives. Did anybody get injured? Uh, uh, there's some swelling. Okay. I know a lot of people got swollen uh, when they're thinking, God, I love that Larry Ching. I miss that guy. And then, hey, it's totally heterosexual, uh, LGBT positive. If you're getting wood over missing Larry uh, and the the warm hug because baseball is a sport about failure played by by judged by negative people in a misinformation environment again baseball it's a it's a sport based on failure judged by negative people in a misinformation environment tom house Tom House, Tom Brady's mentor. Matt Castle introduced him as a mentor. Tom House, Larry Chang's mentor too. And I want to say his phone number is 619-88-X-X-X-X-X. I nail that every time. I don't put in anyone's phone number into my phone. 
I memorize everyone's phone number so that way if my phone gets stolen, they're not just going to be texting Tom Brady at like 415-612-1737 or Jimmy Butler's number 773. Okay, so the reason I'm revealing phone numbers, not Barack Obama's number, but or president's numbers, or Brock, Brock specifically, Michael Jordan. You can actually reverse engineer and cell phone number underwrite by guessing what their number is if you know anything about Kobe Bryant, Michael Jordan, presidents. Like, when you see their phone number, like, you can actually guess. You could have guessed it. Telling them the psycho cybernetics time time distortion. Hey, I will see you in Omaha, but you're gonna need to win some innings. Guess who taught me that? Augie Garrido. Guess who taught me that? Augie Garrido. Bumble? Cell phone number underwriting. Cell phone number writing. Bumble. Cell phone number underwriting. Bumble. Cell phone number underwriting. Problem. Uh, sex fraud. Uh, fraud in sexual relationships. Solution. Cell phone number underwriting because the... Be, cell phone number underwriting because the phone number is not available. Or the social security number is not available. Problem. Problem. Sex fraud. That other side was a problem too. What's your business here at Austin Startup Week? Uh, a lot of business. So, time distortion, right back on focus. Time distortion, Augie Garrido, uh, Psycho Cybernetics. Losing, losing, losing by two touchdowns. When you put it in terms of touchdowns, the game was actually pretty close. That baseball game was pretty close. I will see you in Omaha because we will be in Omaha because I'm going to Omaha with you guys or without you guys. I prepaid that shiitake. I would like it to be all y'all. And I know I'm not superstitious. That's why I book ahead. First World Series, uh, I college World Series, I ended up having to pay like almost 60 grand. The next two college world series, Stanford, 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 uh, have been $0 because I front ran, I front run it. So the first year I had no idea what I was doing. Oh, sound familiar? Getting your reps in. Don't show up at math class before taking math class. Don't show up to Omaha without going to Omaha. And guess what Augie Garrido did? He went to Omaha three times without me. <laughs> Come on, that's funny. Laugh. Laugh, Mother Scratcher. And so uh, using Augie Garrido's stuff, uh, genius, regurgitated via Maxwell Maltz book, which all y'all should study buddy with me, is, is I, will, I will see you in Omaha win some innings. So Bernard Muir is introducing the new coach. David Esker. Bulls, Bulls, little jerk move Bernard did by saying we couldn't get the guy we wanted to get. So now we got this guy. I'm like, what? You're going to say that at a presser? I'm getting my left and right mixed up. Oh, just like Tom Brady. Are we left-handed? Are we right-handed? We forget. Not ambidextrous. I mean straight lefty forcing yourself to be righty the way that we're Chinese. At the press conference, and this isn't private knowledge or private because I don't gossip about people. I cover and analyze trajectories of people as it relates to execution. 
So when I do gossip about people, it's to eventually go to ideas and execution. Does that make sense? Don't just gossip about people just to gossip about people. Don't just like, don't just talk about people because it's scandalously delicious. Oh, did you hear? Larry got banned. Oh my God, for what? Oh, he was giving away uh, the future by reading Maxwell Maltz and being Augie Greedo's mentor. I mean, they don't say that, but they say some slight scale of it because Tom House says baseball is a sport of failure judged by negative people in a misinformation environment. And so I did zero wrong, and that's what made me explode in popularity with all the scouts that sit all around me because they're like, yeah, I've seen him do this. That's just what he does when they just get quiet and be like, who's that guy? Because I'm super friendly. Uh, I got my dog. I'm saying hi to scouts. And then during the game, I'm in every pitch. And so during the intro, Bernard Muir goes, we couldn't get the guy we wanted. So now we got this guy. I was like, what? What? That You're so mean. And it turns out, uh, uh, we had met before. And it turns out that we would have overlapped because he played shortstop and I played shortstop. And that's how you're going to introduce him. So in the back of my mind, I'm like, you could have been that mean to me coming over from Cal because I went to the Cal of Illinois. <sighs> You're going to say that in the introduction? No, 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 no. Okay. No. In fact, I'm going to do whatever I can to help a dude in danger. That would be David Esker. So I bought a season ticket, okay, and maybe Bernard Muir's like manipulating me and be like, ha, 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 I'm totally like getting Larry Chang to do stuff that I predicted. And like that's the first year I bought a season ticket is the not the coach Mark Marquez guy who is begging me to come to Stanford because I, I, I couldn't handle it. I couldn't handle watching undergrads have – my undergrad life, not my real world life, because you know, what's that Capital One commercial? What's that Capital One commercial? I think it's never graduate. Richard Fairbanks Company. Richard Fairbanks Company. Oh my God, right on cue. Oh, right on cue. Never graduate. I did not come up with that. Maybe I did, but why, why graduate? So that was the first year, is the David Esker year. And I went to a lot of baseball games. And hopefully some of these things with my angst and failing forward help you understand why I invited Augie Garrido to Stanford University while he was at University of Texas because Stanford and UT used to play four games, four games. And so, and so when Augie Garrido speaks, he's really speaking about entrepreneurship success as a baseball coach. If you just edit the word baseball with money, that's how to make money is money is a game of failure judged by negative people in a misinformation environment. Entrepreneurship is a game of failure judged by negative people in a misinformation environment. Getting off of dollar zero is a sport, is a negative process judged by negative people in a misinformation environment. Let me start again. Getting off of zero dollars, entrepreneurship, is a game of failure. And it's being judged by negative people who are at zero and they're in a misinformation environment. And that's how I was able to become the third institution of Silicon Valley 
because I memorized all of these lectures here. I memorized all of them. Like if there's something about entrepreneurship at Stanford University, I front ran that. And so that and Y Combinator. That and Y Combinator where Y Combinator has posts. And so when they publish the knowledge, this is Stanford Business. So these two departments, Stanford Business, Stanford Engineering, aren't going to do a collaboration. Who benefits? Who gets hurt? Two departments fight. Who gets hurt? The undergrads. I experienced that firsthand. Who benefited when Stanford Business fought Stanford Engineering? I did. Who benefited when South by Southwest was at odds with UT? Me, because I solved the problem. And that's how to win, is you solve problems. This is how Richard Fairbank won by solving problems at Capital One, crossing the chasm from the right. Solving the problem of FinTech innovation that Capital One solved which is couldn't take a credit card application over the internet. Uh, not allowing uh, US dollars to transfer over the internet. Solution, Richard Fairbank's solution. I don't know where he got it from, but he used the fax machine. Maybe I do know where he got it from. Maybe I am Richard Fairbank mentor. Maybe I worked with Capital One. Maybe I've been at Stanford this whole time in this space continuum. Maybe back on topic, maybe money, entrepreneurship, and getting off of zero is a, is a game of failure, judged by negative people in a misinformation environment. And Tom House, who's Tom Brady's mentor, was introduced to him by Matt Castle and Pac-12 baseball in Scottsdale at the team hotel. I have a house literally across the street from the team hotel. And Cliff Kingsbury is also across the street. Did I stay across the street and just talk smack about how great my house is? House whatever, house six, house nine, whatever house number it is. No. I went ahead and uh, stayed at the team hotel before they got to the team hotel and then stayed at the team hotel. That's external API. That's H-E-G, H-F-A-O-T-R. And because you stayed to the end, I'm going to give you an Easter egg. Here's your Easter egg. For $2, you can go to Stanford Business. My new friend, Chip, okay, who's not a new friend. He's an old friend. Old. Question mark, friend, exclamation point. He's an old friend. We hung out June 26. Seventeen. June 26 is when me and athletes were going to talk about not baseball stuff. So that kind of stuck in my mind. But I obviously remember Wake Forest, June 17. Chip talks to me during Austin Startup Week saying, you're the PQRST guy. I remember the cowboy hat. And I had no idea that he was Stanford. Because the way he said it was, I saw you in Omaha and we're in Austin, so I just assumed he was there, there for, for Texas or Louisiana State or any of those perennial schools, uh, Arkansas. Like, we're in the South. So Chip goes to Stanford GSB. It doesn't get into Irv Grosbeck's legendary class because is it a couple hundred attendees, a class, a Stanford Business School class of whatever, 2000, no, not 2000, 
that's the year. So it's a couple hundred people and everyone wants to take this class and you apply to take it, what, like 110 people apply to take it? 40, 50, 60 people are allowed to take it. Do the, doing the math there, doing the math there, doing the math there, You took the GMAT, you got into Stanford GSB, and then the class you wanted to take, the class you want to take is full. Let me get this straight. You go to Stanford Business School, the GSB, and you don't get into the class? <laughs> like, do you see how funny to me that is? Why don't you just take the class? I don't get that. Like, why don't you just win instead of waiting to win or waiting for permission to win? That's why this is an Easter egg. That's why this is an Easter egg, because for $2, I got into Stanford Business School. And specifically, I asked, hey, what in the world is your problem with lecture 11 because it's not great. And then before that, I killed Irv with compliments saying, you're, I can't believe you're alive because I just assumed that you had passed away because you are a living legend for writing this book. It's the Bible for turnarounds. Duck nine is 650 layers of turning around something like when people gossip about larry chang oh how does he make money why don't you just look at the source because i told you how the money came in it's a turnaround this is how duck nine makes money is taking things that cost two dollars and making a quarter million dollars let me walk you through the specifics in case you don't have almost a 500 for an IQ or almost a hundred for an IQ, which is me. I'm at IQ 88, but guess what? I've been to schools at my school, University of Illinois, that say, hey, these are the six textbooks that you need. That was available at the bookstore. They would just tell you, hey, so for a class you didn't get into, hey, what's the required reading? Buy the book, read the book, PQRST, read the book four times. And then Stanford even has lectures available. And Stanford, to penalize its students in their ongoing war with Larry Chang, specifically the date, February 26, 2013, hashtag 26 Feb 2013, and their ongoing war with Larry Chang, which... Why would, one, why would one institution go to battle with another institution? Because they're jealous. And so what I did was PQRST, the book, and what Sanford did was used to be open source classes like MIT and Stanford were notorious. Now there's a gate that got thrown up. Who hurts when an institution fights with another institution, undergrads and grads, but students who gets hurt when Stanford goes to battle against the third institution of Silicon Valley, Larry Chang. Remember, this is a Chinese person talking smack. So this is actually reverse smack talk because I'm just giving you a fraction of my trash talk because when a Chinese person talks trash, they're not just backing it up at 1.00. They're backing it up at 2.00. Do you like how I just sandbagged? Yeah, that's sandbagging. That's chapter 13. Dumb it down, sandbagging for success is basically Chinese trash talk. But Mark McCormick kind of didn't quite politically incorrectly say it that way. But that's what it is. That's what Tom Brady does. Oh, that cornerback, he's great. Like, he's so athletic. Oh, Brian Urlacher. Oh, he's so athletic, he's a freak. Like, 
There's so many difficult things to game plan for. And then what does Tom Brady do? He runs literally right at Brian Urlacher because I didn't live up Tom Brady's butthole just because, like, I mean, so what? I, I met him, uh, played against him, and now you're in the league because you luckily won a Super Bowl. That's what I thought. I'm like, I'm not paying attention. You got lucky winning that Super Bowl. Like, you don't have a process. And little did I know that he was obviously learning shiitake from me because he's literally pace copying stuff. And that whole reverse trash talk thing, that is Larry Chang to a T. What I did to him, he remembered. Uh, I reverse trash talked him. That story is for a different time. Staying focused, where, where when two institutions fight, Stanford, 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 and Larry Chang fight, guess who wins? Unfortunately, Larry Chang wins. When, I, when this happened, when this happened, okay, who benefited? Larry Chang. And I didn't want to benefit. Why, why can't we just be friends? I get nothing out of fighting. Fighting, okay? Guess what fighting does? Fighting invigorates me. I love the game on hard mode, okay? I love the game on hard mode. That's what happens when you get 17 lifetimes of money before you leave college. That's called easy mode. But guess what? I'm a rich person that identifies as a poor person. Chris Rock. I'm a rich person who loves dollar zero. I'm a freak like that because I love the game on hard mode. I risk everything to help people get off of zero. You guys at Austin Startup Week recently, one week conference, amazing job by the way, best Austin Startup Week ever. The risks I took helping people get off of zero. The personal brand damage because zero is dangerous. Every startup, this is how I became third institution in Silicon Valley, just in case you didn't believe it before. Startup, mentorship, entrepreneurship, knowledge, it's all content geared towards helping a company go from $40 million to $4 billion. Let me repeat that. Entrepreneurship knowledge and mentorship and articles and gossip, 99.9997 to 9998% is armchair quarterbacking, dollars, 20 mil, more like 50 mil to, to 1 billion to five billion in sales, to one billion in valuation. One billion is so popular that it's called Lisa Falzoning. It's called Jessica-ing. It's called Larry Chang-ing. It's called Unicorning. What happened to a mill? Well, people talk about a mill, but the word one million has so much emotional baggage emotional vibration that's negative that's that predates your ability do you know anybody successful that became a millionaire and even that word like ill it's ill because it keeps you from doing one percent improvements which is why i love the undergrads that i cheer for because how many times how many times have I seen 1%? Not that often, because I don't creepily take grounders at practice. Can I take some grounders at practice? Kill me with kindness. Don't put me on hard mode, okay? I love hard mode. I love hard mode. In fact, I like it hard that women, okay? Let's talk about, uh, let's talk about the, the item on the table. I play girl game on hard mode as a trans transgender. I play dating on hard mode when I cross over to straight hetero cis male because I don't use my money. I can't help that I'm just tall and hot. I mean, I just can't. But I definitely don't woo and charm and I'm kind of a prickly pair of negativity. 
Look at my dog. My dog is a giant box of what the F. If I had a trad dog, okay, do you know how much... Well, I was going to say if I had an Australian Shepherd that was in our family, if I had it rolled with an Australian Shepherd, that would pull more ass. But due to the laws of physics and the three laws of thermodynamics, I cannot pull more ass than 110% of the women in every room. But my little dog, Tom Brady, it melts people's brains. I like the game on hard mode. I'll play an imaginary game on hard mode. I'll even pretend to, to, to be in the hardest mode games and do game simulation like Striver Labs. Striver Labs. You put on a headset and then the game goes on hard mode. And then can you succeed? It's game simulation. It's reps. So when the game's on hard mode, how enthusiastic am I to succeed. You want to get rid of me? It's easy. Start throwing accolades, honors, uh, and then don't give me an honorary PhD. Give the people I want an honorary PhD. Elon. Why does Elon not have? These are all physicists as a top 50 physicist myself. Why doesn't Elon have a doctorate? an honorary doctorate. Steve Jobs did, and questionable assent. 408-89XXXXX. Sometimes, when I hear the last four digits are the same, it just invigorates me, because I have less shit to memorize, because it's the same shit. Uh, recently, I met a uh, rising founder with the same last four digits as Steve Jobs. And I was so biting my tongue to not say anything. You want to get rid of me? Love me. Because I leave people that love me. I keep people who love me at arm's distance. People that hate me or some kind of hate thing and uh, I like the game on hard mode if they hate me to be negative like I've been to that before like I can see that coming my way like when a hot girl or actually it's never a hot girl if you're tall hot and smart you just say positive stuff towards me and we get along great it's the it's the it's the eight and a half down to the danger zone of seven and a half. Those girls are trying to run dude game by trying to be like, oh, you're not so tall, or oh, you're a little confident, like ego check. I'm like, proof of work, scoreboard. And I do not consent to you talking to me moderately trending down. So in talking about vagina, we just talked about money because that's also how entrepreneurship works is it's failure and failing forward and like winning. And this is GOAT. Don't ban or welcome the GOAT. Don't, and I'm talking about Tom Brady the dog. I mean, welcome him. 